Hello, Blenders, and welcome. Welcome to episode number 294 of Real Blend, a podcast that has the same number of Emmy Awards as Better Call Saul. Oh, well. My name is Sean O'Connell. I'm the managing director. What? Oh. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Let me amend that joke. <laughs> a podcast that has more Emmy Awards. <laughs> I meant real Emmy Awards, Jake, not the regional ones. Do the regional ones count? Are they are they real? Hey, I'm I'm a quarter of a way to an EGOT, baby. They have chocolate inside of them. <laughs> <laughs> you break them in half. <laughs> You'll uh, never know. On this week's show. Oh my gosh. We're so excited to be joined by Celine Song. Celine Song is gonna be joining us to talk about her triumphant film, uh, Past Lives. We are finally going to reveal the 2023 fantasy draft winner, and then we're gonna head right into our picks. For 2024. So we got a lot of show, a lot of stuff to get to, starting with the introductions. And I will go first with my man, Kev McCarthy of Fox 5 in Washington, D.C. Kev, how are you, sir? Sean, Jacob, Gabriel, actually, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm very excited for people to hear the Celine Song interview because, like, I know we past lives has been a big film. We talked about a lot in our text thread. So uh, if you're into camera work and lens choices and all that kind of stuff, she really dives yeah. deep into the filmmaking. It's amazing. She's so good. Um, joining us as as always in the third chair, Jake Hamilton. And I'm sorry, Emmy Award winning, two time Emmy Award winning, three, three. time, Emmy? three time. God, more, damn it, more, you're more. So more how many times were you nominated, Jake? <laughs> I was about to say nine time loser. I was going to say nine time loser. That's nine nice. time Holy loser, shit. three time winner. Twelve nominations. Mm -hmm. You've had twelve nominations. Yeah. Good lord. How, hey, why you, do you do this show? <laughs> you miss every shot you don't take, Sean. That's exactly right. That's exactly. I guess that's if, so if, you, true. if if there You're was so a, ever a, a pitch, Michael to, Scott said that, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> and then and then Wayne Gretzky, um, <laughs> which is a great joke if you know The Office. Uh, Gabe, okay, I was thinking about the other day. Remember when we just randomly ran into Wayne Gretzky at the yes. trip, at, which is at the trip where Kevin got that sweatshirt. Ironic because the three of us all just interviewed moments ago Austin Butler. Full circle, okay. baby. We're just repeating yeah. our year over and over again. Wow, that is mind-blowing. And I would yeah. like to say, as we <laughs> pitch to minutes. watch us on YouTube, if you ever have wanted to see the personification yeah. of what it means to live a good life, I mm -hmm. urge you to go on YouTube and look over my right shoulder, and you mm, will see nice. what it means to live mm -hmm. a good life. We'll leave yeah. it at that. That's nice. Yeah, there's Things a little tease for tough. you. A little tease for the kids, well, as they go. say. Uh, if you, Now that you're on the YouTube channel, thanks for joining us. Uh, hit subscribe, turn on your notifications. Let some p other people know to come follow us. Uh, weigh in in the comments. Let us know where you're watching us from. As you guys know, we interact with you guys when the show drops. Uh, so we're very happy to have you guys here. Thank you very much. Of course, if you want to listen to Real Blend, all the different places you get your audio needs met, we are there as well too. Spotify, Apple Playlist, all those different cool places. I started to listen to the show on, on Spotify every once in a while now when I'm driving in the car. So that's that's been a little bit fun. Um, and if you would like to sign up for Real Blend Premium, here's what you get with it. You get an ad-free version of the podcast. You get a newsletter from me every other Friday. So make sure that you check the description of wherever you are listening to Real Blend right now, and it'll tell you how to sign up for Real Blend Premium. In the meantime, as mentioned, we have a huge show to get to. 2024 is off and running. Um, and in addition to the huge show that we have this week, you got a couple of things in the hopper. A couple of really cool things that are um, potentially lining up. We like to tease on this show. But we won't we won't get into those. We'll leave it right here with the fact that we have an interview locked. Oh, well, uh, Dan Levy was earlier this week. Yes. If you want to listen you. to a really great episode, uh, Dan Levy came on the Real Blind podcast, talked about his new film, Good Grief, um, and specifically got into some really great conversations about being a first time director and a lot of the obstacles that he encountered um, and some really fascinating, I thought, introspective. The the Ferris wheel story is one of my favorite story, behind the scenes stories we've had. So funny. <laughs> yeah, it is a really good one. Yeah. Um, but talking about what I thought what I really loved hearing him get candid about was unlearning how to just be uh, David from Schitt's Creek and and how his character in Good Grief needed to be more quiet and more subdued and not the center of attention and and him having to physically as he says deprogram himself from being david rose uh after getting to play that character for a really long time anyway fascinating interview i thought you know and not intentional but some of those themes pop up in past lives yes <laughs> how do you deprogram yourself you know when you're when you've been with this uh person throughout your entire childhood yeah uh and then suddenly one of them moves away 
Uh, and so let's get right into our interview with Celine Song, where we talk about a lot of the things that motivated her uh, through the process of past lives. I'm really glad we got her at this stage in the game yes. as well, too, because this movie has been around, obviously, for a really long time. So we talked to her about going through the film festival circuit, going through the awards circuit. Uh, she is, <laughs> uh, here's a reason to to watch this on the YouTube channel. She holds up an incredible shot of her oh, with yeah. all the directors from the Golden Globes, uh, of which she was a nominee. So um, enough teasing. This is Celine Song talking about past lives and her career up to this point on the Roblin podcast. There hey, Celine, is. how are you doing? Hi, I'm Celine. good. How are you? Wonderful. Good, thank you, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, I really oh, appreciate for, it. Thank you for having me. So uh, <laughs> we're coming up on the on the one year anniversary of the film having its world premiere at Sundance. Mm -hmm. And I want you to just sort of, if you can, describe this past year, uh, the, the rocket ship journey that you've been on. <laughs> uh, and, and if you could, is is there an absolute highlight uh, of the, the post release process that, that you're going to that you're going to remember forever? Well, I don't know. I feel like it's like a, you know, what is like, isn't there like a thing for like, like a soccer players where it's like, it's like everything that every time they're on, on the, on the field, it's a highlight reel after highlight reel. Like that's sort yeah. of the way it feels when it comes to the highlights. Cause it's all been so amazing starting from, yeah, starting from Sundance. Cause I feel mm -hmm. like that really is the birthplace of, of this film. I still remember uh, sitting in the green room of the Eccles and uh, being really, really nervous and very <laughs> scared about this movie being out in the world because I have no idea. Because um, I knew what the movie was to me. I knew what the movie was to people who made it. So I love the movie regardless. It's kind of mm -hmm. like it, it, that part of it was unconditional. But sure. then, um, and then of course, as the movie was coming out, there is a hope. And there's a you're hoping that um, the your audience is going to receive you receive the movie the way that uh, you imagine for it you do hope for it, mm -hmm. and that exact thing happened at Sundance. So I think it started off with like such an amazing, a totally spectacular way for a film to be uh, birthed into the world, and mm -hmm. then from there, of course, um, there's a process of uh, just like uh, releasing the film. Which is the uh, you know the in June it was released in June in the summer and I think that part of it was like such a special thing because it was now being seen this thing that I you know I wrote and uh, directed with all these people uh, and that was very much a secret for us it's, we talked about it as like a, we just had this little secret of this movie you know <laughs> that we can't wait to share right yeah and then uh, when June came it was playing in just movie theaters. You know, people could just buy a ticket and go in and watch it and mm -hmm. it's my first movie so just the fact of that was so uh completely incredible you know um mm -hmm. i don't know it was just it was just so special and so cool and and then uh of course now i feel like yeah all the, the nominations and like, like all this awards part of this is like yeah again just like everything else is new to me <laughs> so mm. i'm also it's surreal learning. it could be a surreal, surreal process yeah. Oh yeah, it is completely uh it's completely strange and like uh you know, you always feel like an outsider and then you meet directors who've done this for a million years and they also feel like an outsider. So I don't think this feeling goes away, you know. Oh, they do. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. It's no, no, it's, no, it's not going. It doesn't go away. It's 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 that feeling for, uh forever. So because they all share the feeling of like, yeah, I, I feel like an outsider here. I'm like, you've done this so many times and you still feel like an outsider and mm -hmm. Cool. So this feeling that I have is going to be, it's going to be here forever. So this part of it is, I don't, I don't know. I don't feel, um, I, I'm sure so few filmmakers feel at home at this part of the process, but, mm. uh, I don't know, but it's, it's been really fun and very, very cool. Yeah. Kevin That's and I were the, just discussing, we were just talking yeah. about how, when they announced the, uh, the golden globes to see your picture, you know, with the uh, the four other uh, nominees was incredible. We were so excited for you. <laughs> oh my god! Like there's this like it's it's just such a cool thing. I mean, like did you guys see that amazing uh, the directors? Um, I posted it on social media as well. But like, did you guys see this? That's what that's what we're talking about. That that that's it's the so fun. Cool. That's, that, 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 that's the six <laughs> that's the six nominations for yeah, the Golden yeah, yeah. Globes. Right? Oh yeah, and, I was like yeah. I'm like hello. <laughs> yeah, it's I like mean Marty and oh, Marty. yeah yeah Nolan. No, no worries. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad so you cool. I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up because that I kind of want to go into that because 
when you see yourself on that screen with the other filmmakers around you and it's your first movie you've ever made as a, as a feature film directorial person, the other filmmakers that are in that category, what have your conversations been like with them? Have they talked to you about your movie? Like, ha have you had any of these filmmakers that are in this category? Have you had conversations about each other's films yet? Have you gotten to that point? Well, I feel like, you know, usually the context of which I meet them is uh, at a, like a party or something or like mm -hmm. one of these. So it's always like it's always like stays in the thing of like, hey, hang in there or like, hi, uh, <laughs> you know, love your film. Can't wait. It's sort of like that. So I don't think that I've had a really in-depth thing. I feel like it's usually the uh, smaller things or the chance encounters or like a, maybe the filmmakers who are not fully in this mode. Uh, I think sometimes it's like easier to connect with them just because like mm. they're not they don't have a million things that they have to do the way that like I do you know mm. <laughs> so it's, it's sometimes <laughs> yeah. easier to have like one side of the uh, equation be a uh, little bit like uh, uh, more together at this time and of course later when those filmmakers they go on with this part uh, I'm sure you know, I'm going to be the person who is like, hi, I have a ton of time to talk to you. Just a quick follow up to Sean's question, though, because, you know, people change, but movies don't. So a movie comes mm -hmm. out. Right. And it's the movie is what it is. It comes out 10, 15, 20 years prior, whatever. And then as people grow, like I had an experience where I watched No Country for Old Men when I was in my 20s. And it didn't hit me anywhere near as hard as it did until my mm -hmm. late 30s. And I'm like, oh, yeah. now I understand that ending. So yeah. on, on a different scale, looking at your film, as Sean talks about a year prior, the film hitting Sundance, as you sit here right now, you are a different person. You've grown over this year. And I just wonder what how your perspective on your own film has changed. Um, the movie that you made and put out. And now as you sit here a year later with what has happened in the world or people that you've met and encountered, how has the film grown at all in your own mind? Well, I think that the what you just said is so true because the movies don't change. And I think that... Uh, past lives doesn't change. And also mm -hmm. my relationship to past life hasn't changed uh, mm -hmm. at all is the, is the truth of it. Because I feel like how I felt after I finished uh, director's cut and then maybe after my uh, the sound edit was done and I was watching the whole thing down, I think that's the same feeling I have about that movie. You know, mm -hmm. I'm what I see are, uh, you know, the, the everything that uh, were limits for me as a filmmaker says so and like I see flaws in it <laughs> I see things that I'm like yo that was cool like you know like I think I everything that I felt in the sort of finishing part of the film I think I still hold on to and even mm -hmm. sitting in the echoes I think that my feeling wasn't different I think what does change is uh, the knowledge that um, this movie doesn't just connect with people who who made the movie but it also ma is connected with uh total strangers and people uh, mm. globally people around the world so i feel like my relationship to that changed as in like now they uh i feel like now i have a relationship with the audience right mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but i think that my relationship to the movie really doesn't um because uh, i see it and i see the same movie to me mm. but mm -hmm. the one that uh, i made with the passion and um you know like every day all i'm thinking about you know this kind of like total devotional love that i had so mm. i don't think that my relationship to the movie changes but uh, my relationship to the audience changes because the mm. audiences always are vast and then of course they have um stories to tell me like i know i know uh so many stories from my audience about like what kind of childhood sweetheart they had and mm -hmm. what kind of connection they had and where, you know, the way that they, uh, you know, the way that they connected to the movie, which is like mm -hmm. all completely varied because people yeah. are different. Right. Yeah. So, Very yeah. true. And I think that's the thing. I think the, cool. the warmth of the audience and the, the way that the audience, uh, I can feel a thirst for it or like they they feel hungry for the kind of intimacy that the film offers or the whatever the, the reality or the authenticity the film offers. I think that uh, is very felt, mm. right? But who I am uh, isn't necessarily uh, changing in that way. Mm. I think mm -hmm. all I can do is to offer who I am and who I always was uh, to to the world, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, 
now I know certain things. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, now I know what NBR is, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there are things that I know more about, right? Yeah. As in like, oh, so that's what that event is. Okay, okay, Golden Globes, that's how it works. So it's kind of like, <laughs> like I learned what like a, I, I was always like, what's a stylist? And then of course, now I know what that is. Like, I know what a stylist does and how the money works. <laughs> Uh, like so it's kind of like some of that is practical so in that way um i would say that i learn i'm learning about every phase of it right the Mm -hmm. release phase um and then uh, like festival phase release phase and then now the uh, awards phase like i feel like Mm -hmm. i'm learning the the nitty-gritty of every single part of it and i'm like oh i never knew that that's how people felt about that right it's It's really weird our calendars are dictated severely by the film industry like every year it's always like we circle certain dates and we're like okay well now we're coming up towards comic-con so it must be the summertime (laughs) just weird totally weird it's a weird way to live your life um, totally. I do want to ask you as a filmmaker, um, now that you've been through the process, uh, which you prefer, are, are you, do you prefer being out shooting as much as you can, or do you prefer the editing process? Well, I think the prefer is a, a funny thing. Cause I mean, yeah. so after I finished, uh, 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 making the movie, I think we just, I just shown the director's cut and we were going to, uh, just finish the movie. The, finish the post of it on it uh, my line producer asked me uh fuck mary kill uh <laughs> production production yeah. and post-production okay right? <laughs> and i said <laughs> and, and um I, I i told this story to uh the folks in uh london and then they were they they think it's called like snog uh, snog Mary Pie. I think it's so gentle like that. But in America, we say fuck Mary Kill. In Canada as well, we say fuck Mary Kill. Um, so, and my answer was so clear. To me, it would be like, I would say uh, fuck production because okay. production is so uh, dynamic and there's so much energy and you don't know what you're going to get. And this completely yeah. spontaneous a part of it. And you plan and you plan and you plan, but sometimes you have to throw it all out. Like there was a kind of a really creative uh problem solving like really like wide-eyed uh part of it where it is like so exciting the blood is boiling and there are like a hundred people showing up to just like get this done so that yeah. energy is i think the kind of energy that is i find to be the thing that one would want to fuck you know, okay. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> so that's what i would say and then of yeah. course uh marrying i feel like i would, I would marry post-production yeah right? sure yeah. production is like day in and day out it's like it's a nine to five, right? It's like 10 hours uh, yeah. or 12. And then um, every day it just improves. You just build on the thing that you already did, right? And of course, you might mm. have setbacks or whatever, but still it is a steady incline towards a better and better cut. And my relationship to my editor is that way too. It's very like, it's very much a partnership where you're like, where all the things that make sh- uh, that we have to work on to be good partners is mm. the same way that you have to be in your editing room which is that like Mm. some of it is about just patience and some of it is about uh, understanding the film right and then know and seeing the film really clearly right it's Mm. not yeah uh you're not throwing everything against the wall you're very much like well what is the movie trying to tell me like it's about being a good listener right (laughs) so that is what you need in a good marriage so it's like in that way i think that i would say i would marry post-production and pre-production, I would kill because kill. <laughs> guys, just kill it. Just kill it because I, I mean, pre-production is brutally uh, important, and it is brutal, but it's very, very important because you are um, without pre-production, you cannot do the rest of it right well. Mm. So pre-production, I'm just like a. I know it's absolutely essential, but it is really difficult because you don't even have like one inch of the film made, the film shot. But, yeah. right but you're making massive binary decisions mm. that uh impact like people's lives like everybody who works in the movies their lives and also um uh just like a uh, a lot of money right like you're just making decisions that's going to change how a million dollars is spent um mm. just based on conjecture right it's just based mm. on what you believe oh about the movie right yeah yeah and yeah. sometimes you're like well you know you'll be beautiful what do I know if it's going to be beautiful, right? So some of it is <laughs> yeah. like, you're, I'm kind of like a startup CEO is sometimes I would describe myself yeah. in the prep situation. You're being like, yeah, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be worth spending whatever, $200,000 there, right? Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. And then, of course, there's a huge amount of cash that gets has to be put into making that happen. So every day you're having to make an assessment on, well, is this worth it? Right. Mm. Is this worth the resource? Is this um, uh, and you're always fighting against time because any day now you're you're going to go and actually shoot it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Every minute counts for prep. So, so much of the pressure is about, you know, like that's the part where I'm like, well, I'm making decisions based on a cloud, which is like my script, <laughs> right? <laughs> which is my script that yeah. um, says it needs things. And you're just kind of making decision based on a thing like a smoke and mirrors, right? But you believe um, but in it. You have such belief in it though. You I do. have to believe in it, right? Sure. And, and I think that because it's my first film, Sometimes uh, I had more doubts than I already will for my next movie because mm. in every day, the, you're right, the number one thing you're defeating is um, is the doubt, is mm -hmm. the feeling of like, I think that I need that, but you know mm. how badly do I need that? Because now what they're telling me is this is going to ruin everybody's day and it's going to be a million dollars. So how much of this is something that I... Um, believe in and of course like i think that there are just a moments where and i think in that way i found myself uh like uh meeting and pushing through my limit every day mm. you know uh as a filmmaker because i was it was so much about like wow this feels like an impossible decision to make but that, which decision i make is going to speak to what kind of filmmaker i am right mm. Mm -hmm. And it's and it is always binary. Like I, I wish that there was a middle ground you could find for things, but so often mm. it's like, no, no, we will shoot that scene on a subway, right? Yeah. You'd be damned, it's ninety thousand dollars in New York City to shoot on it just to get the location, right? Right, right, right. That, yeah. Because I believe in that shot. So we're gonna yeah. go and do mm. that. So that speaks to what kind of a filmmaker I am in such a stark way, right? Because mm. I could also say like well, what if you put it in the cap? You know what I mean? Like, there's a there's a there's a way that um like what I care about was being tested mm -hmm. and proven every day, and I think that to me was the most uh, enlivening experience. Like I just felt so alive doing it. You know. And now yeah. next you movie, know you can point at the reviews and the box office. You can say, um, hello. <laughs> hello, yeah, yeah. Tr trust me. Thank you. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I think that so in Korean, there's this word, uh, choshim, and choshim basically means like the first heart, right? And it's the feeling, of, and it's really applied to uh, most creative work where they say, like, you should go back to choshim, you should go back to your first heart. So, what that means is the feeling that I had of like uh, discovery and uh, dealing with the unknown and being faced with the unknown every day, that has to be something that I carry through every single creative endeavor that I have. So mm -hmm. next movie, oh, you know, what I'm, what I always am going to uh, aim for is to hold on to my chushim so mm -hmm. that it's like, I'm never going to be like, look at the nominations, but it's always more like, well, this, I have to treat this like this is also my first movie mm -hmm. right? in some way. Like I know more, I'm so much wiser, but it still has to have the spirit of the first movie because mm -hmm. um, that's the only way that a piece of work can, uh, have the first heart and it can have the uh like the it, it can be alive right because mm -hmm. yeah because yeah. you don't i, I never want to be sitting there uh uh working on a movie feeling like well done this before you know yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 i always yeah, want to yeah. feel like oh yeah. no i haven't done this before it's so scary you know mm -hmm. yeah it's such yeah. a great feeling Celine, we, uh, I was lucky enough to speak with you back in like late May before the June release. And we talked a lot about your, yeah. the use of your camera and the narrative reason why you'll stay on a character and the longing aspect. And I found that so interesting. We talk about shooting on 35 millimeter and the 185 mm -hmm. ratio. So I want to go past that scene towards the end of the film. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the narrative decision process in shooting that moment cutting John out of the frame like that. We're feeling his presence in that and that awkwardness. It's just a brilliant way that you play with it. But just in terms of how you play with those narrative decisions. Totally. I'm Kevin, I totally I remember you. I remember <laughs> you from that conversation. Because we had such a great conversation, Kevin. Yeah. I feel I, like we talked about I but that was a day where I was doing like 36 interviews. And I feel like I remember being like, I really love that conversation because we uh, have to talk yeah. about filmmaking, even in the whatever 10 minutes that we were four talking. Minutes. Right? Yeah. Four minutes we're talking. <laughs> well, and I think that so I mean to me, I mean it 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 is really about the way that uh language can 
uh, uh, create uh, little islands or little isolate, isolated pods between two people. And there can be a culture that gets built uh, within uh, between two people that outside people outside of it cannot uh, feel connected to, right? And language is one of the easiest way to do it. You know, if uh, if me and Kevin started talking in a, a different language that only you know, you and I share, but then, you know, uh, in which case then like other people on the Zoom will not have, uh, will know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So in that way, even though we are sitting right next to each other, there is a way in which that their, uh, their language, but of course their memory and how they see each other and the kind of a world that they live in uh, is going to create a bit of a, uh, a isolated uh, place for mm. the two of them to live, where it's just the two of them. And I think that that's sort of, uh, uh, you're trying to weave in and out of that, because of course, it does not change the fact that there is a, another human being who is sitting right next to them, right? right. Mm -hmm. So it has yeah. so it's a, it has to move like, it needs to be, feel like, a, it has to be a bit of an ebb and flow, right? Of like, when do you see uh, Arthur in that scene? And when don't mm. you? And I think it has, that is the part of the, it's kind of it's part of the dance of it, which mm. is a bit of a revelation and uh, and hiding, right? And mm. what happens to, for example, um, after we are we stay with just Hessing and Nora in that frame, we cut to uh, Arthur, right? Right. And Arthur is sitting there alone, right? Mm -hmm. So we are feeling him, but he's not been uh, let into uh, this conversation yet, and this culture, and this uh, world yet, right? And then eventually when uh, she, at the end of the conversation where they finish talking about everything and, and then she turns to Arthur and the camera follows her, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, she goes like, just talking about you, right? Mm -hmm. And then finally <laughs> he's able to uh, enter into this uh, space yeah. that they created in this bar for just Hesing and Nora, right? Yeah. And, she's, and both of them are saying like, and your husband is the one who... Uh, who's with you in this life, which is a word of kindness. Like, I'm sure Arthur is wondering what they're talking about. But <laughs> in fact, what they're talking about is that like, wow, what an amazing thing that Arthur is a part of your life, Nora, right? So then they turn and then they let him in to their uh, world in that way. And then of course, uh, eventually uh, Nora, you know, Nora is gone and it's uh, Hesung and Arthur that are, you know, sitting there, just the two of them. And again, now this world has become just these two people, Arthur and mm. Hesong, and uh, they're connected by, uh, of course, the time and space, but which is a completely a miracle because why, why would these two people be in the same uh, space and time together, right? right. It, well, because of the miracle of Nora, because of the way that these two people care so much about this one woman together. So even though they're completely different, they don't even speak each other's language, they don't have any memory of each other, they're also able to uh, create a world right in that bar where it's just mm. the two of them right and they know what they're talking about and they're connected by this word union they, they i mean that's what hesing says to arthur hesing says mm. um uh do you know the word union right mm. i think it's you and me right and Hes and arthur goes yeah i know what that word is because mm. i'm uh i'm married to nora you know so and in that way they're connected and they're able to build a world of their own Oh, around mm. this word inyan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> Selena, yeah. I want to, I want to get. It's so cool how you break that down. <laughs> now, I mean, I'm telling you, like all of what you just said translates as we watch it subconsciously. It's so, it's insane how that well, works. I, I would like to get you to break down, if I could, the one scene to me that will haunt me forever, and it's okay. the briefest shot of uh, towards the end of the film when you flash back to adolescent Nora oh. and Hey Son. Mm -hmm. Um. And I will tell you that we were watching your film on a screener, uh, my wife and I yeah. at home, and I had to pause it because the two of us were sobbing t too much, and we didn't want to we didn't want to miss a single frame. Yeah. But we were we were devastated by that quick shot. And I have to know, was that always intentional? Well, you know, did you always mean to shoot to that? And if you could talk about capturing the young kids, um, yeah. you know, on that day, knowing what you or, or if you knew, you know, that you were going to use it later. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, we needed the, uh, it was in the script, um, mm -hmm. but I think that I wasn't sure uh, if you were going to uh, need it, 
right? But I still, uh, we all, of course, were planning to shoot it. But I think the the key to that particular uh, shot is that uh, even though in life, the two kids say goodbye to each other in during the day, mm. the two the two kids um, are shot in that uh, one flashback moment. Uh, they're shot in the dark. And yes. that's supposed to, right. And that's oh, what that's wow. supposed to imply is that uh, these two kids have been waiting to uh, get their goodbye in that corner for 24 years. Oh my God. I didn't even and, put that together. Oh my God. Oh and, my and of God. course, in only when uh, they're able to say goodbye uh, in East Village as grownups, are those mm. kids able to then actually say goodbye? Because the oh. truth is that the movie is built in three goodbyes. And when they're children, because they're kids, and I think we know this because we were kids once, we don't really understand the weight of a goodbye, right? So that wasn't a very good goodbye. The kid mm. just goes, bye, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then only 24 years later, when they realize that um, from that moment, they've become different people who belong to different worlds, and they're happily in their own worlds, and this in this life, they're not going to end up together, right? When they realize this, and... And then they finally get to say goodbye to each other. Only then are they able to um, get the goodbye that they're owed. So that's why that's that shot is uh, shot in the dark. Uh, and this was an idea that came out of a conversation with my DP and my production designer, uh, Shabby Krishna and Grace Yun. And we were talking about the scene and we kept talking about, I kept being like, well, I want to flash back to that moment, but I want something about it to be different. Right. Mm-hmm. I wanted something about that moment to feel different than the time that it was it was uh, in childhood. Mm-hmm. And we were coming up with a bunch of ideas. We had wind, we had uh, color, we had so many different thoughts. And then I think that I sometimes I don't, I forget if it was Grace or Xavier, but one of them, they were saying, it's like, well, what if it was a lit like the moment when they're saying goodbye, oh, right, okay. uh, as adults? And then I was like, Bingo, that's it. Because that's that tells a story, right? Yes. That tells a story of what it is, which is that like, well, these kids have, you know, like they were just waiting in that corner, right? Mm. Until on um, and then and what that's able to imply is that is the is the weight of what these 24 years have been. And they're still the same to each other uh, 24 years later in that way. You know, it just oh. happens to be East Village at night. God, wow. you are a genius. Yeah, You're such yeah. a genius. That is amazing. You are right, well, such a genius. They're wrapping us. Um, I we had so many questions. We'll have to get you back on the show. I want to okay. give a shout out to, to the younger actors, by the way, who played the oh, two yeah. characters. Because that if those that those scenes don't work, the rest of the film, like you have to have that work, and it's such exactly. an important thing. It really is that those kids had to be on point. They well, did. And I think that to to me that I didn't do chemistry reads for the grown-ups because I knew that that would work. But the kids are uh, I needed I did a chemistry read with the kids because oh, interesting. of course their chemistry has to be exactly what you're saying. Their chemistry has to work and it has to be the building block for the chemistry as them as adults. Because yeah. and, and uh Greta and Teo, when they were working on their chemistry, they were watching this particular chemistry read video so that mm. they could uh, learn from it and sort of like retain the child, childlike chemistry that the kids, of course, naturally have. And what happened was that, so I already had the girl first. Um, and then, sorry, uh, uh, I ha- already had the girl first. And then uh, I was looking for the boy and we brought in three amazing boys to c- come in and, um, you know, uh, you know, do the chemistry read. And I asked the two of them, uh, to I asked him to do something that is really hard to even ask ad- adults to do, um, which is uh, to do a little bit of ad lib. And what I asked him to ad lib is like I will ask the little Hesong to uh, basically tell the little Nora like to stay in Korea and uh, not leave and keep mm-hmm. being friends with him, right? And that was the piece of ad lib. And the boy who I ended up casting, he did such a beautiful piece of ad lib that. Um, he did such a beautiful piece of ad lib that he actually made the little girl cry. And, oh. and that really was, that really oh. taught me that like, this is actually the right person, right kid for the job. And, and that, uh, their amazing, amazing chemistry read is of course the way that the chemistry got built for the adults too. They will, they will talk about it. Like they'll talk about how like they watch those videos and like learn so much about who they are. 
Yeah. That's wow. amazing. Well, congr- congratulations to you. Uh, Thank you so it's much. It's an honor having you on our show. Uh, good luck with everything the rest of the season, but just in general, thank, thank you. you for making this movie. We, we all thank love you. it and we appreciate it. And we'll have you on again next time, Celine. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, Bye Celine. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, you guys. It was such a good conversation. We want to thank Celine Song for joining us. She is so awesome. And Kev, I want to give you uh, specific props for uh, continuously reminding us, hey, we should get Celine on the show um, because it's tough with the awards racing past and the holidays as well, too. We've had a, a couple of different people have reached out to me through direct message and said, like, how come you guys haven't talked about this movie or, or why didn't that movie get a, a, an... It's like we got hammered at the end of the year, you know, in terms of the number of titles that were coming and then the holiday kind of shuts the industry down. And so I'm really, really glad that we made the time to circle back around uh, and get Celine on because she was a great conversation. And speaking of that, um, I know we're going to move on. Um, I uh, there's a lot of films that, again, we all had to catch up on past lives. If people out there haven't seen it, highly recommend it. Also, congrats to Celine and the whole past lives team because they got a PGA nomination um, which is really big. And there's uh, yep. this year, the PGA had 10 nominations, which we're assuming are going to be the same 10. They're going to end up for best picture. And over the uh, weekend, I, I was I had a chance to go to Los Angeles and I got to visit Quentin Tarantino's new theater, the Vista Theater. Um, and they're playing a 35 millimeter exclusive engagement of the zone of interest. Um, oh, cool. And I, I just have to say for anybody listening to our show that ha- has heard about this film or hasn't sought it out yet, I know it's coming out in limited release and then I think it'll platform. I'm assuming seek this film out. Um, I, I, I honestly can't even put into words how this film made me feel. Uh, it's so shocking and so disturbing. I'll never see it again, but mm-hmm. I'm, but I'm very, I'm very uh, moved that I did see it. I was talking to my mom about it the other day and uh and it's just yeah for people out there who haven't seen this or heard of this film look it up it's one of the most insane. it should win the oscar for best sound i've never heard sound design and and for people who aren't aware like quentin revamped the classic vista theater in in los angeles obviously he has the new bev where we did our event with quentin tarantino for the book launch um but the but the vista theater is still like the classic it looks like it did when it years ago but the inside is like completely remodeled but it still looks the classic way but speaking of sound design that jake's bringing up they had this whole brand new sound system in the theater Mm. it's a one screen theater and it's some of the best sound design i've ever seen so seek that out and also if you're a fan of godzilla minus one they're releasing it in black and white um, I think I want to say this weekend or next weekend. So seek that out as well. So oh, just two, and, two reminders. And this weekend, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is coming back to IMAX. And then, I, I, I hear that it's the best Spider-Man uh, God, ever dude. made. I hate you. <laughs> That's so annoying. <laughs> Jake Hamilton of Fox TV. Uh, <laughs> the, the very specific and, and, and renowned... <laughs> Fox TV with no <laughs> with no clarification at all whatsoever. <laughs> all right, listen, uh, we do a draft. This is a fun competition. Everyone likes to play fantasy football. Kev, of course, is is Johnny oh, NFL nowadays. Dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, get Kevin in our fantasy league. <laughs> Don't I'm even do get it. me started on what happened to the Eagles and the Dolphins. But continue. Yes, um, but we we are a movie podcast. And so we will uh, we're going to get into the the results of last year's fantasy draft. And then we're going to get right into this one. Uh, 2024, we're going to figure out who's grabbing what and and how many points they're going to go for. And I will, of course, for the logistics side of this, turn it over to our wonderful producer, Gabe Kovach. Hi, Gabe. How are you? Very excited. This is very fun. This is a fun episode for me because um, I love when we get to compete on the show. And this is this is one that sort of sits for like a year and then we come back to it. Um, and I know that you guys probably don't even remember what you what you drafted, and that's kind of half the fun. Is I'm going to be revealing uh, what you drafted, the scores you got, and then I'll reveal our winner. I'll give a quick touch base uh, with the audience at home. If anyone doesn't know what this is, um, each year uh, we go around and everyone drafts nine films uh, from the upcoming release calendar that they think are going to have the highest review score according to the Rotten Tomatoes critic score, not the audience score. Um, Disclaimer, it's not because we think that the Rotten Tomatoes critic score is some sort of beacon of truth. Uh, it's just that it's a little bit more predictable and, and reliable than um, the audience mm. score, which can be kind of manipulated. Um, so this is kind of just a fun way for us to 
to score our little fantasy draft. And I, w- I would like to add what happened with us this past year and, and will likely happen again this year is certain things that we choose end up getting bumped. Well, I'll say this. This will be revealed. It only happened to one of us this year. Last year, the year before, okay. it was it was quite a lot. And, you know, we were in the middle of things getting delayed and postponed for several right. reasons. Um, but what I'll do is I'll go through each list one by one. I'll reveal your scores as I'm going. Uh, and then at the end, I'll, I'll give you the winners. But I'm going to start with Kevin McCarthy's list. Okay. Uh, starting in the ninth round, Kevin drafted Fast 10, <laughs> okay. which may be the final Fast movie. I don't know how that story's going. But no, it's score. Two more. Two more? It's score. Rotten Tomatoes critic score of 56. <laughs> I give Sean, I give, or I give Kevin credit for, you know, it was the last round and he said, you know, what, I'm going to, I'm going to vote with my heart. And there's, I respect that. At number, in the eighth round, Kevin took Michael Mann's Ferrari. Ooh, I'm oh, surprised wow. that lasted till the eighth. Yeah, it did. It did. Uh, it was a very late release. So it might've, it might've been one that sort of slipped the mind. Um, that came in with a 72. Okay. Okay. Oh, and if I didn't mention, this is as of today. Sometimes these shift a little bit, but the day we're recording, I, w- I refreshed all these scores. Oh, good January for you, man. 17th. I'm impressed. Nice yes. job. Thank you. Good work. Uh, in the seventh round, Kevin McCarthy took John Wick 4. Oh, good pick. Which good brought pick. him in good a pick. 94. Yeah, I was going to wow. say, that's 90s. Wow. That's a good well one. Um, that's a good before pick. you continue, Chuck, so do you, do you add up all these numbers and then divide them up? Yeah, by we just by do an average. We do an okay. average. That's how I cool. score it. Yeah. Okay. Um, at number six, or in the sixth round, excuse me, uh, Kevin took Wonka. Mm. Wonka. Kevin with a lot of late I feel releases like that's, in I feel year. like that's not a bad pick. I feel like he did okay. This is a respectable pick. It came in with an 82. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's honestly higher. I, I thought it would have been like mid-70s. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So in the fifth pick. round, Kevin took Mission Impossible 7. All right. I mean, oh, that's, that's a fair that's pick. That's in the 90s. That's, that's a no, 90s. No, I don't that's, think it is. No, I think it is. It's that's critical. in the 90s. It scored, it scored a 96. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I want to say it had like the best Of course, you all got to go to Rome. Rome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is that? What is that? It has nothing to do with Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Sure. Wow. Sure. John Sean's feeding the fire. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get to go. <laughs> <laughs> in the fourth round. Kevin came back down to earth a little bit mm. with the Little Mermaid scoring Ooh. 67. Mm. I'm surprised. I, it, the flip side of like Ferrari lasting as long as it did, I'm surprised you took that one so high. Yeah. But uh, Kevin, no joke. This this is almost the exact same thing. Not to go on a football tangent. This is what happens with fantasy football too, where you kind of look back over your draft and go, "Oh my god, I can't believe I took that guy so high. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe this guy lasted all the way to the ninth round." We, yeah. It's almost the exact same thing. Yeah. Weirdly enough, my third round draft pick last uh, last year was Brock Bowers. I don't I don't know how I chose that <laughs> for my movie one, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Kevin's actual third round pick, JJ McCarthy, draft is. Indy 5, which came in mm. with a 70. Mm. Not the worst. Mm. Not the best. A bit average. In the second round? In the second round. This is, this is exactly what you guys are talking about. He took Cocaine Bear. <laughs> really? <laughs> in the second round? I was probably just messing around or something. I don't remember that. I don't know. In January of 2023, maybe it was like, you know, maybe that'll just take That was like right before storm. it came out, too. <laughs> I think so. I think it was a February release. Uh, that came in with a 66. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomatoes. Yeah, I, I lost this. Of course I did. Kevin. Yeah, continue. However, his first pick, Oppenheimer. Oh, wow. Uh, All right. Which came well on done. brand, which came in with a 93. There you go. There you go. 93 Damn. and Mission Impossible 7 with a 96. Something's wrong here. Mm. Yeah, that's Something's wrong really... with the system here. Oppenheimer, <laughs> Oppenheimer has a 93. That's 96. I mean, you imagine if I'm just... getting a... Oppenheimer a bad review. I don't I, like. I, I <laughs> yeah. can't imagine. So I mean, always does. I, I will say this though: I, so I, you're I, de- I, bound to get a couple reviews. Yeah. So if a movie's three hours long, there's one or two right. that are just like it was long. Right. <laughs> I'm talking and, points. And people can have their opinions. I'm sure, just messing sure. around, you know. For me, not that I, I, you know, we don't like to shit on movies on this podcast, but for me, 96 for Mission Impossible 7 is, Mission Impossible 7 is so surprising just because I felt it was a very, it's Mission Impossible and does great things, but it felt very middling for a Mission Impossible movie to me. I, I do think, and I've said this before, and it's important to note, like when you're on Rotten Tomatoes, for example, if, a, if every critic gives a movie a three out of five, that movie could end up at 100%. Mm-hmm. 
The average so, score is more important. Right. So it's yeah. almost like the like 96 percent for for mission. That could be reviews that are like three out of five yeah. or three right, and a half right, right. out of five, yeah. which is kind of where we all landed. But yeah, because I would give it if I had to choose between fresh and rotten, I would be give fresh. it fresh. Right. right. Now, it'd probably be like a three point five out of five. Right. Right. But it'd be a fresh. Right. And it's and the same thing goes for the negative. Like if everybody mm-hmm. gave a movie a two out of five. Right. It would get a zero percent. Essentially. Right. Um, so it, you, that's very important to note. <laughs> By the way, if everyone's watching us on YouTube, I don't know about you guys, but I'm furiously scri- scri- scribbling down. <laughs> and this is often right before he knocks water all over his notes. <laughs> yeah, no joke. <laughs> Do you guys remember your picks? No, no, not at all. Uh, no. OK. Not at all. all right. No. I mean, I, I went first. So that means I'm probably the last. But continue. Uh, I don't know if you I don't remember who went first oh no i'm talking about like you you put me up first so i'm assuming i'm third no i just this is just how the order that it's in my my doc um up next we have sean's picks and i might pick up the pace here a little bit just because we we do have another draft to get to but in the ninth round sean took polite society Mm. which scored a 90 that damn 90 got a 90 and sean sean you were you were excited about that whenever uh you yeah, drafted. I remember you loving that and then you really enjoyed it yeah that was one it's that you terrific. stuck with you through the year terrific that said in the eighth <laughs> round oh no <laughs> sean oh, no. took the uh jamie fox will ferrell talking dog vehicle strays, <laughs> strays. <laughs> <laughs> which brought home a 53 i'm going to go listen to this episode to find out what our mindsets were during all of these let's go to 53 in wow. the uh, seventh <laughs> round, <laughs> in the seventh round, sorry, uh-huh. I lost my my space here. Uh, Sean took Bo is afraid, oh. which in January of 2023 was a very good pick for the seventh round. I would argue, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it came in with a 67. Wow! Yeah. All right, I didn't. I did not like film. that movie. Polarizing film. Polarizing, Polarizing yeah. Polarizing. What was the Rotten Tomatoes on Cocaine Bear one more time? 66. And yeah. what was Bo was Afraid? 67. Oh. <laughs> Different films? Same image? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Weird. Yeah. <laughs> in the sixth round, Sean uh, stuck with oh, no. the Marvel ship. Oh. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Okay. Ooh. Okay. 70s? He brought in a respectable 82. Oh, okay. wow. Okay. That's way, 82. way too high for that movie. Okay. In the fifth round, Sean took the color purple. Which 82%, per, 82% is actually how much CGI was in the film. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. In the fifth round, Sean took the color purple, uh, which scored an 86. Good. Good pick. In the Ooh. fourth round, Sean took Creed 3. Good Ooh. pick. All right. Which scored an 88. Yeah. Great movie. In the third round, Sean took The Killer. From David Fincher. Ooh. Which scored an 86. Whoa, Sean, Sean. Coming in hot. In that the second round, Sean took Barbie. Fuck oh, yeah! yeah! <laughs> yes! Sean. Which scored an 88. <laughs> what? Is yeah. that in the 90s? I, that might be one that suffers from 4 billion people reviewed it. Yeah. You know, kind oh, of thing. Oh, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. I'm now, Sean's first round pick is interesting because Sean had the option of keeping Spider-Verse in the first round because it had gotten delayed in the previous draft. Mm-hmm. He decided to forego keeping Spider-Verse in order to draft Dune Part 2, mm. which subsequently was delayed out of the year. Right. <laughs> uh, in its place, he took the Iron Claw <laughs> in the first round, technically. Uh, technically free agent. Okay, but wait. that's not a bad pick. No, it's wait. a good pick. It's a good Explain pick. Explain how and why. By the time Gabe that's got just, to me, yeah. I only had X amount of movies well, that we didn't know the score. I'll of. say this disclaimer now: you're responsible for your own team here. I just, yeah. if I notice, I, I reach out. Look, but you, you got to play the waiver wire, baby. If you see your, yeah, if you see your name drop, you reach out to me, and say, "Hey, I would <laughs> tell, I'll take this." Yeah, 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 all right, so, all right. But so don't worry, Iron Claw. don't worry, Sean. The wire, the Iron Claw is a great pick. The Iron Claw took home a score of eighty-eight. Yeah, I would say I would have thought it would have been in the '90s. Good chip. That's a huge, right, that's a great, great pick. Great. All right, Thank and finally, you. we get to Jake's list. All right, oh, let's go. I won. I won this. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to beat Sean. Sean that's a lot of '80s. This. In the ninth round, Jake took "Leave the World Behind." Oh, mm. that's good. Which scored mm. a '76. Oh yeah. wow, I thought it did yeah. better than that. Polarizing film, I think. Yeah. In the eighth round, Jake took Napoleon. 
which scored a 58. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would have thought that would have been higher. Yeah, that's, un- the, that's unfortunate. That, that one in hurts. S- in the seventh round, Jake took Super Mario Brothers, mm, which okay. scored a 59. What? Ooh. Now, this is one I noted. This was our, uh, unless I missed one, but this is our largest swing between critics and audience because its audience score was a 95. I love Come that on. movie. Come yeah. on. 59. Uh, in the sixth round, Jake starts a comeback with Maestro, which scored an 80. <laughs> the irony. <laughs> Jake's not oh, one. Oh, oh. <laughs> the irony. In the fifth round, Jake took Asteroid City. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These make sense. Which yeah. scored a 75. Ugh, I think I lost. In the fourth round, Jake took Poor Things. Mm, okay. Ooh. Scoring a 93. There we yeah. go. There we go. Continuing this surge, <laughs> Jake took in the third round Killers of the Flower Moon. Okay. Which nice. also scored a 93. Hot damn. In the more second than round. Barbie and more. Uh, and, wow. It's a better movie than Barbie. Yeah. <sighs> That's. Well. I. Yeah. Debatable. Mm. Different movie. I don't know. It, it, it is. It, I, I love Barbie. Yeah. But I think Cal- Killers is a better film. But Barbie's great. Yeah. Oh, Killer, but that's Killers like that's like on, for like that's for like film reasons. Killers it, is on Apple streaming, by the way. Right? Yeah. Yes, it is. Anyway, that's Public a different discussion. discussion. In the second round, Jake took Elemental. Scored Ooh. a seventy-four. That, that should be higher. Would have been higher. Yeah. That yeah. should be yeah. way higher. I think that's one that you, if you probably looked back, the audience score on that probably moved up the way that we that think movie's it really good. Um, in the first round, Jake took Spider Verse from Sean, which scored a ninety-five. Nice. Wait, explain. How did he get it from me? You decided not to keep it. We you offered said, a trade. No, no, no you, you gave it up. You had the option, which you'll see in the next draft. You had the option to keep. Do, uh, excuse me, Spider Verse because it moved. It moved. Okay. All yeah. right. I but got, you said I no. You. I won't keep it, and you took Dune instead. I got you. I, got I didn't you. do great, but I'm also not mad at my, like, all of my picks make sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's close. I'm going to start with announcing the winner, just because there's only three of you and there's really no way to lead up to that. <laughs> to, to make it dramatic? <laughs> no real yeah. suspense. So the winner of the uh, Real Blend 2023 Fantasy Movie Draft with an average of 80.8. That's Sean. Is Sean O'Connell. Yeah, there we go. There we the go. Key. The key. The key. Well done. The key. Well done. Well done. If Good you want to see how close this year was, in second place was Jake with 78.1. Oh, nice one. Damn. Well done. And well done. less than a point behind him is Kevin with 77.3. Big Daddy Kev. Yeah. Big Daddy Kev. It's Pretty right. close. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> So then well done, the Sean. order should be Kevin should go first. The, for uh, this no, so I did a I did a random I did a random order. Oh, just because there's no like keepers technically, you know, there's no. I would assume the winner goes first. No, usually in uh, hmm. uh, like in fantasy sports, the if you win, you have like the least odds of picking picking higher. But again, there's only three of you, uh, so you know, seems backwards. Well, no. In, so it's, in terms of sports, uh, the well, no, in sports, sports it's that way. Oh, fantasy saying, it seems backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, anyway, congratulations, Sean. I don't remember if you bet anything. Uh, maybe a cheeseburger from Whataburger. <laughs> <your vote>? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> congratulations. It, 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 w- it would keep you hydrated. That's yeah. true. Yeah. 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 Try I already have this <laughs> giant <laughs> glass of water Try right here. I'll just maintain this. <laughs> All right. Mm. On that note, we Tasty are going to meal. we are going to <laughs> throw it to a break, and when we come back, we are going to start the draft of the 2024 season. Okay, and we are back, and we're going to kick things off with revealing the order of this year's draft. But before I do, someone here has to make a decision. Sean. Sean. Yes. You lost the opportunity. For Dune Part 2 last year. Correct. Oh, and I you did. picked it in the first round. So same as we did last year, I will give you the opportunity now, before you hear the order, do you want to keep Dune Part 2 as your first round pick? Or do you want to put it back on the board and we get started? Hmm. I am going to put it back on the board. It's okay. back on the board! <laughs> okay. All right. Now. I'm putting Dune Part 2 back on the board. Wow. That's fun. That's Why? Fun. 
because <laughs> he's going from Adam Webb, baby. <laughs> because uh, because I got <laughs> twisters. <laughs> That's true. Do yeah, I think he's got dollar sign on the end of it for nothing. Do you know? I don't know. Oh, but I don't know if I get to pick first, though. Do I? That's what I said. That's before I reveal the order. Before you reveal the order, so it might not matter. In? I Are might go third. In? Yeah. Um, third. Do you think it'll drop? Well, then in that case, I'd like to keep it then. No, you already, you already gave it up. <laughs> yeah, you already gave it up, dude. We, we we started to sway you the other way, but your initial is give it up. Gabe, right, where do you, where right, do you, right, what, what say that, you? That's okay. I Here's what up. I say. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because Sean is our first Sean's pick. Oh, I'm the first <laughs> okay, pick. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Okay. Well, it's back so the, the order board. this year, again, yeah. I random, random generator uh, is Sean, Jake, and then Kevin. Okay. All right. Uh, so Sean, you are on and the we, clock first, and we can just pull up like a movie release calendar. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah cool. whatever, whatever. And then it's up to you if you know if if you feel like it's a maybe it'll get released that kind of thing. You know, you're welcome to draft it. But if it drops, you know, you gotta All replace right. it later. Let um, me tell you what is going to be the highest critically rated film of 2024, and it's George Miller's Furiosa. Give it really? to me number one. Controversial yeah, pick. A, a, a film you're not excited to see, right? Not in the least. <laughs> exactly, but, exactly. But critics cannot get enough yeah. of yeah. slobbering all over the Mad Max franchise. Can we just remind our audience that Sean O'Connell doesn't think Mad Max Fury Road is a good movie? I just I just yes. I just want to put that out there. Yep. Just pl- thank you. That's it. It is Move the on. mo Beautiful. one of the most overhyped films. <laughs> Jake, you are now made. on the clock. Your first overall pick. Give me that Dune 2, baby. Give me that 2. It drops to second. Yeah. Yeah. Will the say this this is a repeat of last year. (laughs) Will it open? Well, no, Spider Verse. I'm going to lose my shit if, like, 30 minutes after this episode, it's like Furiosa moved to 2025. (laughs) (laughs) That's very possible. That's very possible. Uh, All right, Kevin, your first round pick. You're on the clock. I'm going to go with. Deadpool three. Mm. Wow. Now, do we are we we're snake drafting we're snake, right? So, so Jay, Kevin yeah. So Kevin, again. you're you're up uh, right away, the second round. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Snake draft. Amazing. Then I will take Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Mm. That's a good, good pick. Nice. I, good I wanted that. Good pick. Well, you're next. Uh, I'm gonna take Inside Out two. Oh, it's a good one. Ooh. I had that as my eighth round. I feel like Pixar is always a fairly safe bet. I feel like you're never going to crash and burn with Pixar. Like, Inside I feel like Out it, too, right? Inside Out too. I feel like with Pixar, like the worst you're going to do is like in the 70s. Yeah, I think what would we say Elemental came like 74? Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. Let me double check my work on that. I feel like, like people went into Elemental with like their with the pitchforks and their knives sharpened ready to take it down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That, so that one was that one was a ninety three on audience well. score. It, That's uh, crazy. Element. That's crazy. That's gonna do well. Um. All right. Rounding out the second round, uh, Sean. What is your second pick? Challengers. Oh, I had that written down. That's good. Yeah. That's nice. a good pick. Uh, Sean, you're starting the third round. It's right back to you. Um. Give me Nosferatu. Mm, good pick. That's Sean's third. That is yeah. Sean's third, and that brings us to Jake's third. I'm going to go the animated film Lord of the Rings: War of Rohirrim. Okay, good call. War of Can you spell Rohirrim for me? I believe it's R O H I R R I M. Forgive me. Uh, you know, it's probably the only one that sounds like that coming out this yeah. year. I'll I'll be able to find it. <laughs> as far as I know, it's the only Lord of the Rings coming out this year. Are they doing the second season? Is that coming out this year? I don't think so. I'm not I even sure they started yeah. filming that. No, yet. I thought, no, I think they're yeah because they were able to. I thought they were able to film during uh, the strike. Oh, maybe because they filmed overseas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin, that brings us to your third round pick. I'm gonna go with the Janusz Kaminski lensed film If. Oh, mm. if. good which call. Which is directed by John Krasinski, starring Ryan Reynolds. That does look. Uh, real, that that's. Just all and of the details you just said makes me very interested. Yeah, Spielberg's Alone. guy shot this. It's awesome. So it look, looks cool. So, uh, Kevin, you're back on the board right away with the fourth round. I will then take Joker 2. Joker 2. Even though I know Joker 1 didn't have a good Rotten Tomatoes rating, I have yeah. a feeling did this it not? one. I don't think it did. Someone double check that. I think I'll it was lower than. I remember looking at that Rotten Tomatoes rating for Joker 1 and being like, 
Really? I think it was like 60 something. 69. I'm going to I'm gonna have to find some more movies. We're blowing through everything yeah. on my list. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it had a 69 uh, critic rating. Isn't that wild? Uh, 88 audience. Yeah, I remember coming down on it over time. Not like yeah. down, down on it, but I remember leaving it being like, thinking really really highly of it and then after a rewatch i was like oh you know yeah i didn't love it's it as good. much it's as i did originally. Good. it's very yeah, good but, yeah, it's very good yeah all right that was my fourth round pick right yep and jake i'm gonna go mickey 17 damn it you um, fucker i heard that got moved well it got moved from march it was supposed to okay. come out in march um okay. and but i i have faith that it that it's hopefully not going to be delayed an entire year. I'd, I'd hope that that. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Cool. Okay. I'm, right. I'm taking a little bit of a risk there. That's Robert Pattinson. Mm-hmm. Bong Joon Ho. Yeah. Bong Joon Ho. His follow Parasite. up to Parasite. Um, Sean, your fourth round pick. All right. I would like to ask a question. Uh, it's not what this game is. Move yeah, on. We, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> might up? have an answer. Is there is Untitled Jordan Peele a 2024 movie? 2025 yeah i think i think they moved it i I think i think he yeah it won't come out this year there's no way okay he hasn't even started production i'll say this if there's something that's on the calendar that is untitled i'll i'll allow you to draft it if that was more your question yeah yeah Um, yeah Yeah. but that one i know for sure but again risk if it doesn't even have a (laughs) released title yeah all right um give me wicked part one i guess wicked part one what's that uh, it's the adaptation, adaptation of the really? Broadway musical. With, wait, 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 um, no, no, I know, I know. Well, Wicked is they, it's two parts. Two parts, yeah, it's two parts. Oh, I didn't know that. This yeah, is yeah, yeah. Gonna, um, the second I, part is just I the Wizard of Oz. I think they're it's, a year apart. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> We're just gonna that's, end that. That's pretty good. <laughs> what what pick is that for, Sean? Part two. They just put Wizard of Oz <laughs> in theaters. That's really good. <laughs> uh, uh, um, Sean is up with his fifth round pick. I'm up again. Yeah, didn't didn't the guy who directed Wizard of Oz was it Victor Fleming? He did Gone with the Wind and that movie in the same year. Uh, yeah, I think we didn't he come in part way through one of yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, I think part way through Gone with the Wind. But gosh, wow. Yeah, I mean that was mm. back when there were like seven directors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Gone with the Wind had like five directors. Or yeah, something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. All right, give me. Uh... Shit, I don't believe that this is going to be the case. Down to the wire we're in the fifth round, and it's already getting dude, nitty and so gritty. Many, thin, baby. There's so many good ones left. Give me Gladiator 2. Oh, that was my that's, next one. That's Sean's oh. fifth? And yeah. they, just, they just wrapped that, by the way. They, yeah, a, today. A, yeah. That's mm-hmm. awesome. I can't, that's, little, I'm so excited for that. Little shameless plug when we had uh, Ridley Scott on for Napoleon. He was in the middle of going back to filming Gladiator 2. So and he talked about his cool. original idea, the, the yeah. involved a portal to hell, which you should yeah. go you should go listen to that interview. Too. I think, but I, also, I, I'm afraid critics are going to have their knives out for that. You know, I don't like know. I'm, I feel like no, Gladiator's people, beloved. People love Paul Mes- Mescal. Like people. Oh, there's that him. too. There's yeah, that too. And I, and Denzel. I think he, yeah, it's going to be. And I feel I like is it Ridley yeah. kind of a. Kind of a he puts out one and people are like eh, and then he puts out another one. And people are like oh yeah, yeah. And then every time they go, it's Ridley. It's got to be good. And then they kind of react. It kind of feels like he goes back and forth with yeah. critics. I Possibly. mean, not that his movies necessarily go back and forth. It it is a it is a pretty big undertaking. To the last duel se- was severely under. Yes. Yeah. All right, uh, uh, Jake, you're up with your fifth round pick. Uh, I'm going to choose Drive Away Dolls, the mm. uh, Ethan Cohen. Yes, uh, feature. Is Good this pick. his direct? Is this his directorial debut post Coen Brothers? Mm-hmm. This is solo. Yeah, uh, that right. Kevin that puts you in for the fifth round. Is this Adam where I have Webb. a double pick? Oh uh, yes, you're your fifth and your sixth. <laughs> 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 See, what's funny is we're all joking. Watch Madam Web be amazing. Well, as you um, say, Madam Web really all we know is, be is a trailer. Yeah, and I also like is, you know, I like the three leads, so I'm 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 in. All right. Um, Put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> yeah, come on, come on, Kevin. You know what? Screw it. No, I'm just kidding. No. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I can't I'm cut gonna... to a year from now, and he's like, I did what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the fall guy. Yeah, mm. I just wrote that down. I The yes. reason why I'm... I'm going to give a little insight into why I'm picking this, because sure. I actually almost opened with this one. Wow. Because the reason... Well, I love David Leach. Um... 
the concept is really cool. It's basically drive with but with a bigger budget, <laughs> right? He's like a stunt driver um, uh, and Ryan Gosling. But the reason why I'm confident in this one, did you guys see that they're going to premiere two months early at at South by Southwest? Oh, they are. Yes, I, I did see that. Yes, so, I did see that. You don't do that unless your movie's good. That's a good call. <laughs> like, like, like <laughs> especially tell the tell that to, to Disney and, and Indiana well, Jones. Now, yeah. di- my argument for Disney and Indiana Jones was that they that was a that was kind of a career retrospective to, you know, Ford sure. and like, you know, they gave him the award there. It felt more like overarching indie rather than just, hey, let's premiere five here. That did backfire. And we and we all know that now. My mom or dad sent me an article the other day. I think that Indy five was like the it was the least profitable film or the most that that of the year in terms of budget and box office. Really? It like it, it like lost the most money from what I uh, someone looked that up. I'll double check it. But um, all right. So I'm going to go with the fall guy. Okay. Um, and then your and, sixth round pick. And that's because of the South by Southwest thing. And then for sixth pick, I'm going to go Kung Fu Panda four. OK, you know what is that? That might be. I mean, I bet you the last three have great ratings. Yeah, that was, that was <laughs> yeah like, that's, actually, that's not a bad pick. Not a bad I mean, pick. That is really that's coming the sort out, of. Right? Uh, that's the sort it of is. thing of like yeah. everyone okay. who's who's reviewing March, that film probably likes those movies. You yeah, know what I mean? and I could see that being like a, like a like a it'll just be like a fun family film. Yeah. Um, Jake, your sixth I round pick. I'm gonna go uh, the bike riders. Yeah, baby. You can't delay a movie twice. It's never been yeah. done. <laughs> uh, Sean, you are up with your sixth round pick. Uh, so can I take um, Linklater's Hitman? Because it hasn't really opened yet, right? But the reviews are already out for it. Let me let me look and see. Here's how There's I'll decide Bike Riders it. reviews. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't think those can count then. If there's already, Too late, I already picked it. Well, hang on, let me let me look. Let Can't me take look. it back. This is how I do it. If it already has, I'll let Gabe. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Those two might be not 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 me yeah, eligible. Yeah, Jake. If it was like two reviews, I'd give it to you. But it has how thirty. It has thirty five. Yeah, but good thing the limit's thirty six. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to take a step back. Thank Come you. On. That's a good. That's a good call. Jake, I'm going to bring it back to you in the sixth round. Son of a bitch. Give me. Um, <coughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Give me Quiet Place Day One. From the director of Pig. Um, and then, Sean, what was the one that you had put up? I'll, I'll check. I said Hitman. I Link hope later. there are 36 reviews. Link later's. Why is 36 such an important number, Jake? Because it was one more it was one more than, than it 35. Be 30, 37, Kevin Smith style. I thought it nice. was uh, also a very important year that someone's oh, turning. Oh yeah. 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 Special yeah. voice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sean, that is uh, ineligible, has 70 reviews. Damn! <laughs> wow. <laughs> guess what it, guess what its score is after to 70 be reviews. Fair, I didn't look. I didn't no, look. I, I believe you. I to believe be fair, you. Guess what its score is after 70 reviews. 95. 90 something. 96. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sean knew that. He already knew Boiled. it. I knew it got good reviews. Uh, all right, Sean, your sixth round pick. Okay, give me uh, Horizon uh, Chapter One. Oh, who's gonna yeah. take Horizon Chapter Two? <laughs> Good pick. Which Good is, pick. does it come out the same year? Or is it? I, I thought it was like months apart. I hope they make it a big event. <laughs> oh that was good come on that was good <laughs> yeah, yeah. i love that movie paul verhoven is that his movie yeah wait yeah. is it verhoven let's look verhoven? and see yeah they both come out this year both well, horizons oh do i want to Chap- take chapter two chapter one yeah you got back to back picks come on baby jeez i should have taken chapter two it would probably get better reviews um you can take them both do this back to back do I want to do that? Uh, yeah, why not? Oh, what wow. In for Imagine a penny, in for wow. a pound. Cut to worst Western of all time. <laughs> 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 so chapter two gets scrapped. Makes Waterworld <laughs> look like <laughs> yeah, Citizen yeah. Kane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Horizon 2, more like Waterworld 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the postman okay. rang twice. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Costner oh, and his duds. Man. That's so good. Oh, man. Well, 
Huh. Jake, you're on your seventh uh, pick. I'm going to take Kinds of Kindness, the next uh, matchup between Yorgos and Emma Stone. Say that again, sorry. Kinds of oh, Kindness. Yes. Hey, why not? Why not? They haven't missed yet, have they? Hmm. Uh, they Kevin, not. that brings us to your seventh and eighth pick. I will go with Alex Garland's Civil War. Hmm. Ooh, yeah. That seems number seven. high risk, high reward. Yeah, I would say I, that's, a, that's a risky one. Yeah, cut to a year from now when yeah. uh, Kevin goes, I thought I picked um, Captain America <laughs> Civil War. <Yeah. laughs> that's Kevin's seventh? <laughs> yes, and for the eighth round, you're on the clock. Clock I'm that I'm not really keeping. Go with, just because of, I, I don't think that, that the franchise generally gets the best reviews, but I'm going to just hope that this one lands. So Bad Boys 4 mm. is my number eighth pick. Okay. And that's just kind of more of a... I just wanted to, I, I love that, that franchise, so. Yeah. Uh, sh- Jake, your eighth pick. I'm going to say the same thing in that they haven't gotten the best reviews lately, but I'm going to hope this one lands. I'm going to uh, Fede's Alien and just pray uh, that what it's... What was it called? Romulus? <laughs> They're saying it's Romulus, Romulus, but has that been confirmed? Uh, I don't know. I'll just put... I'll put Alien Fetty. Ridley loved it. <clears throat> yeah, but he also didn't like Blade Runner 2049, so yeah. Take that take that for for what you will. <laughs> Sean, you are up with your 8th pick. I'm a little 8th and ninth. These are your last two picks. This is it for me? This is it for you. All right, give me uh Twisters. 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 And give me Madam fucking Web. Yeah. Are you re- Okay. Yeah. I want it. I cannot <laughs> wait for a year from now. <laughs> it's going to be 99%. <laughs> this is Sean's eight greatest nine. movie of the millennia. There's a couple of things that I have written down here that no one has picked, and I'm very surprised that I really yeah. should have taken. But yeah. Kev, or Sean's, Sean's headline for his review, Marvel is saved. <laughs> it's a Sony movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is, that's Sean's eight and nine? Uh, yes. So Jake, we're on your. Okay. Uh, Um, Yeah, Jake, your final pick of the draft. Oh, this is my ten. Nine. We're only do nine. Nine. Oh, we're only do nine. Yeah. Oh, which is weird. That's weird. Why? I'm gonna. Uh, I think when we started doing it, it just ten seemed a bit of a stretch. Like by the time we got there, I could go to ten. Do we want to add a tenth round? Sure. Yeah, why not? Okay, yeah. we're going to add it to... Ladies and gentlemen at home, <laughs> as commissioner of the league, score. I have to make an official yeah. announcement this year. <laughs> we're adding, we'll we're be going adding, to 10, baby. We're adding a kicker. We're adding a 10th <laughs> round. It's never been done before. The league needed some expansion. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, Roadhouse. Uh, give me just a moment. I have to redo <laughs> my... Just change a little bit here. Um, okay, sorry. You're I'm going round. with Roadhouse. You Roadhouse? Sure? Yeah, Roadhouse. Nice. Hmm. That project seems ill conceived. <laughs> I, I the, but the buzz that I'm hearing is that like Jake Gyllenhaal and the director, I think it's is it Doug Lyman? I was going to say it has that a... they were like so happy with the final product and so proud of it and so into it that they literally like have been fighting with Jeff Bezos to try to get a theatrical uh, oh, yeah, distribution. Yeah. Amazon. Wow. Yeah. 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 He yeah, trained yeah. to be a UFC fighter in that. He should. Yeah. Yeah, he showed Bezos, up at a Bezos real Bezos UFC should watch event. out, you know, if he's trying to fight him. Um, <laughs> terrible joke, but that was just buying Kevin time for his ninth and tenth pick. Oh, I have to do two here. All right, yeah. my number nine is going to be the new John Watts film. Ooh. Oh, that's a good call. This is uh, George Clooney and Brad Pitt. Mm. Wolf's. 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 Good oh, yeah. pick. And that's then one... Is- that I'm gonna, I'm, I feel like in a year we're gonna be like, how did that last all the way? And that's part one, and then Wall Street is part two. And then uh, let, me see, let me see here. All right, number ten. I'm debating between a couple since I wasn't planning on doing ten, but I am gonna go. I'm looking through a list here of what's coming out. Um, I'm just gonna take ballerina. Yeah, that's because, that's one that I'm sitting there wondering why it's still there. I think because well, what one I like Ana de Armas too. It's it's a John Wick spinoff. Yeah. Um, I, I you know not that nobody was a spinoff, but I thought I like that genre that they play that that of that mm-hmm. world of that fighting world. So um, and I ah, think you, you yeah. know who directed it? Who? 
Len Wiseman. Oh, really? Oh, wow. He hasn't been doing anything in a oh. really long time. All right. Well, there you go. Ballerina. Jake, your 10th and final pick of the draft. My 10th and final pick is a, is a high risk, high reward. Okay. Because of the director who has directed some classics, but also hasn't been known for firing on all cylinders lately. I'm going to go with Megalopolis. Oh, okay. I'm surprised that we didn't even think about that one. Who is that? Francis uh, Coppola. 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 Oh, 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 oh. Was it self funded for like 150, yeah, 150 million? million or something yeah. Like that? His own money. And so I should really, I think I should really open up a venue. movie is self funded. You know? It is. Yeah. Well, Costner's movie. Yeah. Yeah. Can't Plains believe, five would you, seasons. What did you say, Gabe? I can't believe I picked both parts. <laughs> that was a mistake. If he doesn't come on the show now, <laughs> who? Costner. Costner. Uh, I, I'm <laughs> just picturing Sean telling Kevin Costner on our <laughs> show. Oh, I drafted team. both parts and getting nothing <laughs> and getting no reaction whatsoever. Just it's getting all, he just stares into the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Sean's two minutes of Sean's uh, junket is him setting up what a fantasy draft is and then how that works in <laughs> <for> the movies. <laughs> I mean, like, the second part. You play better. fantasy football, and he goes, "No," and he goes, "Okay, so here's how fantasy football works." <laughs> <laughs> what do you yeah, mean? He started movies. draft day. No. That's true. <laughs> Come on, that's true. That's a good point. He's got to know that's what it's true. about. Um, For the record, don't watch draft day if you want to learn how football drafts work. <laughs> good point. Good uh, point. Sean, you're the last pick of the draft with this right. new expanded tenth round. <laughs> um. There, there's one major movie that I'm really surprised none of us have taken, and well, I think it's because it, we're, we're all, all. I'm uh, also I, surprised that Sean hasn't chosen a particular film. Well, he spent two of his picks on Kevin Costner, on Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Costner. <laughs> so he might have missed one or two. Sean, there's uh, a big movie coming out that you're very excited about that I'm surprised you didn't use. Are you talking about Beyond the Spider Verse? No, because I don't think it's coming out. This yeah, it's not, not, it's coming out not the one. I, not the one I'm thinking. I will say, but it's that would be a major steal if you took it as the last oh, yeah. draft <laughs> in the last expanded spot that and we weren't even supposed to have. We forgot. Oh my god, we forgot it. That's <laughs> if it doesn't happen, you get to replace it. I mean, the one I'm talking about is high risk, could possibly be high reward. It's the fourth one in the franchise. Well, this is like drafting. no one else that can pick, so you can tell me what it is, and that's then true. I'll decide whether I'm going to take it or not. Beverly Hills Cop. No, Ooh. I don't think that's going to do well. Mm-hmm. You never know. The one I was thinking about was, and again, high risk, more likely high, well, more high risk than probably high reward is Beetlejuice 2. Well, that's where I'm leaning. That's, yeah. that's actually where I'm leaning right now. Um, Beyond the Spider-Verse is kind of like an injured player. No one took Ghostbusters for his yeah. empire either, which I don't think that's going to do. Um, you know what? I'm going to go for my, I'll, I'll go with Project Artemis. Okay. What is that? Is that the one? Is that the sequel to Hotel Artemis? No, it's Scarlett uh, Johansson and <laughs> but it's Chris Andy Evans? Weir book, right? Project Artemis, uh, the guy that did The Martian. Yes, correct. Yep. Yes, I can't remember but, if it was Project Artemis or his other book that I'm technically in the middle of reading, but I kind of fell off of it. Beetlejuice went undrafted. It did. I don't think that's going to be good. I'm a little worried about it. I mean, uh, Jenna Ortega said uh, in an interview the other day that. Uh, it's the most fun she's ever had on a set, and she doesn't strike me as one that, that right, says nice things unless she believes it. We are running long, so I'm going to quickly recap each of your lists for the oh. folks at home, uh, and then I will let Sean close us out with his, uh, his question for the audience to tune in in the comments. But quickly, starting with Sean, who drafted first, uh, starting in the first round, going through 10, Sean has Furiosa, Challengers, Winner. Nosferatu. Winner. Winner. Wicked, Wicked Part 2, uh, Gladiator 2, Horizon, an American Saga, Chapter 1. <laughs> Horizon, <And>? an American <laughs> Saga, Chapter 2. Oh boy. <laughs> Twisters. I must have been Yellowstone to make those picks. <laughs> Madam Web. Twisters? I think Twisters and Madam <laughs> Web. <laughs> Why did I take this seriously? <laughs> and Project Artemis. Uh, Jake, who Started picked so second, strong. starting in the first round, took Dune Part 2, Inside Out 2, uh, Lord of the Rings, War of... Ro- I, I didn't spell it out. Lord of the Rings. What did I say? No, I'm just saying. Just, we can just Lord, of the Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings movie property. Uh, Mickey 17, hmm. Drive Away Dolls, Quiet Place, Day One, Kinds of Kindness, the new alien flick from Fetty Alvarez, Roadhouse, and Megalopolis. I feel good. Mm-hmm. Not bad. 
Kevin. Cocaine bear. Round, took, <laughs> took Deadpool, <laughs> Deadpool 3. Okay. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. That's a good pick. If Joker 2, The Fall Guy, Kung Fu Panda 4, which I just wrote Kung Fu 4, <laughs> different movie, <laughs> uh, Civil War, Bad Boys 4, two fours on this list, uh, <laughs> Wolves from John Watts, and Ballerina. Well done, okay. boys. Another year in the, in the, uh, in the books. Will Jack awesome. Nicholson show up in Wolves? I, I love that movie. <laughs> Him and Michelle Pfeiffer? That's a great movie. Comes out of retirement just for, just for the joke. Just to do Wolves. All right, Sean. I mean, if anybody could do it, it would be John Watts, because he got because he got uh, Tobey Maguire out of retirement from Spider-Man. There's a big Toby, Toby Maguire. Yeah. Toby Maguire and Jack Nicholson. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. The joke was the idea that they pulled someone out of an older movie. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Listen, it's your guys' turn now. You've heard our picks. Uh, tell us what film you think is going to be the most highly rated among critics in 2024. Hit the comments down below. Let us know which ones you guys believe. And also, if you're down there, let us know who you think is going to win the 2024 draft early. We're going to hold you to your picks and uh, and we'll come back around in February of 2025 and, and discuss this. I so. think we might. Maybe we'll do like a, a check in. This year, that'd be a good crew. idea. Maybe oh, I'll just do a quarterly I'll, check in or something. I, I like that. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. In the meantime, follow us on social media at Jake's Takes, at Kevin McCarthy TV, at Sean underscore O'Connell, at Gabe Kovach, and the show is at Real Blend. We will talk to you guys next week. Um, with do we have an interview next week? I don't know. Stick around. We'll see. Stick around. Dune Part Two. Stick Dune around. Part Two. Dunes. Every Deadpool Three. Two. Deadpool's. <laughs>